Hi there, welcome to this video. Today we're looking at a particular individual known as Chase Venstra. Been in trouble multiple times now and the bail has gone to an eye-watering two million dollars or so. It wasn't that long ago we had a brief look at that with the bail, if you remember, but it goes into more detail now. We're looking at a news report today I think it might be Elko County Journal. I'll see when we get on the site. It just lists all the dates, the times, and what happened leading up to Chase Venstra getting in trouble and being taken in. You may wonder, who is Chase Venstra? Or is there any significance behind him when it comes to the likes of the Dylan Rounds case? Well, I'll explain that shortly. Make sure to stick around because this could explain it better to you this video in general, because there's been people in the background trying to push it as if Chase Venstra is tied to Dylan's death or that in recent time getting into trouble again or so it's to do with the Dylan Rounds case, but it doesn't seem to be. So make sure to stick around to understand the details today. Welcome to those that are currently here in this live premiere, although this could be a shorter video, it's a dedicated one which we need to take a look at and it will clear up loose ends. If this time, feel free to share your thoughts, opinions, reactions in the live chat box right hand side of the screen. And welcome to the rest of the people that are watching in the background of this video. If anyone has questions or any comments, leave them down below under this video. There'll be a pinned comment by me with some additional links if you want to check them out. And if you want to catch up on the last video that I did, which was yesterday, top right corner of the screen, click on the I symbol, you'll be able to find it there. Okay, so we can look at the article today and I think that's all that's needed for now. But the backstory with Chase Venstra, right? Because it crosses in and out of the Dylan Rounds case, considering that's what I've been covering in recent time and Chase Venstra's name came up in it a lot let's say, towards the start and halfway through. There's no harm in clearing it up right now. So then it sets the record clearer and then you can focus more on these individual unrelated charges and crimes committed by Venstra. Okay. So when it comes to Chase Venstra, how it was like worded from, I guess, Candice Cooley. He drifts in and out of the likes of Montello, Nevada, up to Ogden, Utah. And to be honest, when we saw the CC, well, not we saw, but what was heard from the likes of Candace Cooley, in which the FBI informed her CCTV of Chase Venstra in Ogden at a certain time later on in the day, and earlier on at Flying Jay's Snowville, away from when Dylan Rounds was being murdered at the time, again. You can see those like little crossovers there. We don't need to get into a deep history with Chase Venstra because, I don't know, maybe there's a lot of mis uh, messy things happening. But Chase Venstra um, drifts in and out of places. Though supposedly there was a homestead by Chase Venstra in Montello, which had a couple of trailers and items laid out all over the place, supposedly stolen stuff. Some of which is what one of the Montello locals highlighted when talking about Chase Venstra and another homeowner within the area that was the victim of Chase Venstra stealing stuff, which was camouflage, some additional equipment, a firearm. Maybe that will crop up in today's video, the article. If not, or it's a bit obscure, anyone feel free to add in extra details down below. That will be appreciated. But there's an overlap with Chase Venstra. The overlap is Chase Venstra in the Dylan Rounds case at the start was treated as a person of interest because Chase was one of the few individuals, last individuals, to have seen Dylan Rounds before Dylan's disappearance and death, right? And it dates back the 25th of May 2022, a few days before the 28th of when Dylan was taken out. And it was down Tacoma Road of Lucin or Montello, Nevada. I guess Montello, Nevada, Tacoma Road on the side of a gravel path. 
and Dylan Rounds ended up coming across Chase for the first time ever, picked him up, took him to Montello. Chase at the time, bloodied, bruised, missing a shoe or two. Yeah, not in the best shape. Now as for Chase Wednesday, he had a son, he has a son, and that son did work for Dylan at some point in the past, which Dylan wasn't aware of, the father being Chase. Okay. But yeah, that was the first time Dylan came across Chase, and really early on there was those assumptions that, oh, it is Chase Fenstra tied with Dylan's disappearance because of him being one of the last people to see Dylan. But I guess kind of early on it was cleared up quickly, at least by the eyes of Candice Cooley, who was kind of passionate about defending Chase Fenstra as being innocent. Chase Fenstra supposedly handing himself in just to clear the confusion up at the start. And then onwards past that point, at some point, besides Brenner getting those unrelated gun charges, being in the possession of them when he's not supposed to, a felon. That was unrelated from Dylan Brown's case, but Brenner was taking him. And then after, Chase Fenstra too, but it was unrelated. Now, I think early on when police were investigating Chase Venstra, I think it was worded in the articles as treated as a homicide investigation. And when I heard that at the time, I thought, oh, are they linking that with Dylan's disappearance then? But then later, when looking back at an article, they said they never treated Chase Venstra as a suspect in the Dylan Rounds case. It was a separate investigation. So they kind of went back on their own words there, which is a bit weird. So yes, whilst Chase Venstra was in the area on the 25th and came across Dylan, after that point, Dylan supposedly never saw Chase Venstra again because on the 28th, the day, Chase Venstra at 7.01 a.m. was supposedly seen on CCTV at Flying J's Snowville. And then later on in the day, Clinton, Utah and Ogden. So over in that direction, so east, east of the crime scene, many miles away. So past that point, it's kind of like anything that happened to Chase onwards, it was unrelated from Dylan Brown's case. And with gun charges being on Chase Venstra, unrelated to the Dylan Brown's case, it was kind of like Brenner regarding that particular thing. Though later on, there was further crossovers where when um, Chase Venstra was appearing in court to do the gun charges unrelated, Chase Venstra brought up James Brenner's name. Now Brenner has his own unrelated separate gun charges but has also with time March 3rd 2023 onwards was charged with the murder and desecration of Dylan Rounds. So there is more stuff on Brenner than the likes of Venstra but I think with things being processed quicker with Venstra a much higher bail compared to Brenner because we don't know the bail for Brenner because I guess Things haven't gone underway yet. But referring back to that court appearance by Venstra, I think it was in 2023, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure it was, where he brought Brenner's name up about how Brenner and some other guy, don't know who that other person was, ended up confronting or ambushing Venstra at some point and taking the firearms off of him and then later returning them back. A little bit random but the reason why it's interesting in how you get these crossovers with the case of Dylan Rounds being in the, the wrong place wrong time and then perceived as being the last person and the last person to have taken Dylan out which in the end supposedly wasn't the case and kind of having an alibi being elsewhere on the actual day of Dylan's death it kind of ruled Chase Venstra out with time though, there's that overlap of the general public, outsiders out there and outside of this community that feel very strongly passionate and know in their mind with their supposed knowledge that Chase Venstra is responsible for Dylan Round's death. Now, as I said, with what we're looking at today, the article does not make any references to Dylan Round's case or any charges to do with that case. Okay, just to put that in perspective. But I just want to provide you a bit of a backstory, a very rough one from how it started off and how it was perceived that Venstra was responsible for Dylan's disappearance. And on top of that, the location of it all because of how things played out. 
leading up, but before the 28th, Venstra being within the area roughly of where Dylan Rouse was passing through. So you got the geography there, you got the person of interest, the interaction factor, okay? And on top of that, Chase Venstra being friends with Robert Aviles, another individual that was treated as a person of interest short term in the Dylan Rounds case. Um, so you had that. As for Chase Venstra, I believe he did a lie detector test within the Dylan Rounds case and he, I think he lied on one of the questions, but we never heard about it or heard what it was all about. Um, Brenner failed completely. Don Hatley, a friend of Brenner, ended up passing with flying colours. But yeah, it was Chase Venstra that lied once or twice on the test. Who knows what that was about, but interesting because if it, if it was a lie detector test around Dylan Round's case, what was Venstra lying about there? That's any interest. Now, whilst Brenner has been locked up since, um, I believe it was at some point in 2022, because we saw it in the Heavy D interview, that Brenner did reach out whilst being in Weber County Jail, reaching out to Justin Rounds via call from the prison, or the, yeah, the prison, the, the jail, and basically said to um, Justin Rounds that, it was like putting the blame onto Chase Fenster of being responsible, said the blame game going on in the background that overlaps, saying no, that person's responsible. Yes, Venstra is responsible. But then at, later on, unrelated, unrelated charges, you got Chase Venstra throwing the book at Brenner saying, oh yeah, on, on these gun charges and stuff, Brenner got involved too because he attacked me and he ambushed me and he stole my items. So he's involved as well. You see, they're at each other's throats. And it's probably been like that for quite some time in the past because there is history in the past that Chase Venstra and Robert Aviles is hated by... Kurt Wadsworth, or at least was up to a certain point, and majority of the community of Montelé because they saw Venstra, Chase, and Robert Aviles as troublemakers and constantly reoffending. And there were stories and rumours that Chase Venstra was also stealing people's items, burglary, similar to um, Robert Aviles, on and off. And at some point, don't know why it came up as an example, but Chase Venstra supposedly was going to fix someone's vehicle or maybe quad bike but then ended up stealing it after. I think there was another claim made by an, uh, maybe another local that Chase Fenster would take things from people, hide them, bury them and then act as the, the guide to try and help relocate those items to help the people. I don't know what the hell that was all about but there were some like cross references, rumours and events which were all over the place when it came to the Dylan Rounds case. And a lot of that was talked about. The question was, and how does this apply to Dylan's death? How does this apply to the 28th? And most of it didn't. And most of the people didn't provide a clear explanation. Kind of fell flat. But still to this day, there are some hardliners in the background who aren't, who aren't even living in the area, but they supposedly know. They know Chase Fenstra is responsible for the death of Dylan Rounds, even though there is more evidence on Brenner to suggest Brenner was responsible. And even those in the background that deny and say the CCTV footage at Flying J Snowville and later on in the day, Ogden, Clinton, Utah, it was never verified or confirmed by police or FBI. Yet it was Candace Cooley that said she received that information directly from the FBI. So there seems to be contradictions there. And even Justin Rounds confirmed it himself. So these background people that may try and cause disruption or have a different narrative to the original story who also believe that Chase Fenstra is responsible for the death of Dylan Rounds and also claim that Justin Rounds has known things and that they're in communication in the background. Well, all this third party representative bullshit and yet Justin Rounds is saying completely different things publicly over time in which all these outsiders claim that it's something else and that they've talked with Justin. Well, Justin isn't 
in line with what you're saying publicly. Justin is saying completely other things, similar to what Candice Cooley is saying. So there must be a severe disconnect with humans out there. Very weird, and as as since it's been very quiet. Okay. So as a heads up, my opinion: Do I think Chase Venstra is responsible for the death of Dylan Rounds? No. Okay. Was there room for questioning at some point? Absolutely. Just like how you would with other people too. Let me know your thoughts down below. So what you think there? But I just wanted to provide you a bit of a backstory before we go any further, just to understand how much Chase Venstra's name has popped up all over the place. It could be a microcosm of the amount of times you see Chase Venstra getting into trouble today when looking at this news article which has been created as of recent time. Now, shout out to the odd person in the background for reaching out and informing me about this. Luckily, I was able to find the full news report or so online and I was able to access it. Let's hope I can still get onto it now. I'll begin reading. Feel free to listen in. And if you do notice anything of interest, you know, if there's any overlap or crossover with Brenna or Viles or specifically the Dylan Rounds case, let me know down below. If you wanted to provide extra context behind some of the charges or where the, the locations of crime took place, feel free. And as for the um, odd individual out there like Weezer, I think, Weezer, let me know if any of these crimes that pop up have anything to do with that neighbour back in Montello at the time of when items were taken away and it was happened on the 25th of May 2023. Okay, let's head on over right now. The name of this website's called elcodaily.com and it was within a newspaper too, as I saw as screenshots in the background, but we'll read all the information here as it's been collected. Title reads, Montello Man Jailed on $2 million Bail, which is a significant amount, probably shocking to some people. Now, to be honest, maybe we can talk about it later, or maybe I can mention it now. Because of the $2 million bail coming up in recent time, there was, there was some in the background, I guess the, the, the dark side community in the Dylan Rounds case and YouTube streets that were suggesting or trying to push the agenda that the reason why the bail was so high is because Chase Venstra has been done on the charges of Dylan Rounds death or desecration, you know, like that. Obviously, it doesn't seem to be the case here. Now, as for the title, reading Montello Man, I guess that's because Chase Venstra was born in Montello, Nevada. Could be wrong, but he doesn't actively live there, hence why Candice Cooley said he moves about daily. But anyway, let's just read. Elka, a Montello man is in custody on a $2.1 million in bail on multiple counts of stealing firearms from empty homes in the area about two years ago. About two years ago in Montello. So I guess that's around the time of the Dylan Rounds case, roughly speaking. But, you know, this is more to do with Montello, not loose in Utah, right? Take in mind, Dylan Rounds was on the 28th in loose in Utah. So if loose in Utah does not show up here, then obviously it's completely unrelated, okay? Just in case anyone's wondering. But yeah, Montello out and about, I guess that applies to the outer skirts area as well, because as I mentioned a bit earlier on, there was a few like little stories and um, yeah, just stories and events out there that Venstra was going about here and there and taking things from people. But as, as we heard, Robert Aviles did the same thing, and at times in the past, um, James Brenner did stuff too, stealing things. So there is a crossover in criminal behaviour out there, and because of the lawless nature of people and the lack of police, they're able to get away with a lot of stuff. But whilst they do a lot of stuff, it can accumulate over time, as we see here, hence why the bail is so high. Multiple counts of stealing firearms though from empty houses and that was two years ago chase venstra 42 years old is that as of right now uh, do you know what i don't know why but like a, a year or two ago i'm sure i saw an article in chase venstra to do with past stuff um was it to do with 2016 clinton utah 
a police standoff for 10 hours in his house at the time in Clinton. And he had firearms, he had grenades, he had a bulletproof vest. 10 hours standoff. So you see, Chase Venstra has um, a bit of a long-term history of getting in trouble, committing crimes, some more serious than others. Interesting. And the usage of firearms, the influence there. Why does Venstra like stealing firearms for his own personal connect collection or to sell on? I wonder. But the reason why I referenced that then, the 2016 charge on Chase, it's it just because I'm sure he was only 40-something back then, 41, but that was 2016. You know, I don't know, it's just, it's just weird because I'm sure I remember Chase's age being brought up in a past article, what I read, and it wasn't that far off from this age. I mean, let's just be honest, whether you want to apply him to the Dylan Rounds case or not, He's one of the younger individuals. He's on the younger spectrum when it comes to the case because the other names, what we've heard of, have been in the late 50s going into their 60s, right? Like Brenner, um, Kevin Bibbins, and, you know, Don Hatley, how his name's been brought up. So worth taking in mind. So if you apply it to Dylan Rounds, Dylan Rounds at times was in the presence of significantly older more experienced men in different ways, not to be taken out of context there in a dodgy way. Anyway, let's just focus on reading here. Venstra was booked into the Elko County Jail on March 12th. I assume that means 2024? You'd think so. I mean, this article's very recent. I mean, lower down it says 2022, but... You know, sometimes they don't always give the year if it's of recent time. It's a bit silly. I think they should include the whole year as well and the whole dates make more sense. I mean, March is already gone, uh, the 12th of March. So 12th of March, Elko County Jail, Venstra booked into it on two felony warrants, charging one count of home invasion with a deadly weapon, one count of grand larceny, three counts of burglary with the use of a firearm or during which a firearm is obtained, seven counts of grand larceny of a firearm and ten counts of possession of a firearm by a prohibited person. So you see on, more so on a consistent basis it, the, the theme is driven, maybe the passion by firearms, wanting to obtain them, wanting to steal them, being in a collection of multiple firearms. I mean, when Salty Pancakes went down to supposedly Chase Venstra's homestead in Montello, Nevada, although abandoned onwards, 2022, there was boxes and bullet casings. So you can see that theme running, right? Move on. According to court documents, Elko County Sheriff's deputies were dispatched to Montello and Pilot Valley on March 18th, 19th and the 23rd, 2022. And again on July 1st, 2022 on reports by the homeowners of suspected break-ins and firearm thefts. That's Montello and Pilot Valley, which we've Heard mentioned in the past, I think. Now, this is 2022. This is the year of the Dylan Rounds case. But before that, there, there, there was there was one dispatch on July 1st, which is uh, post Dylan's death, isn't it? And I think the 1st of July could be around the time of when I started covering the Dylan Rounds case and also hearing about Chase Fenstra separately. Hmm. Deputies first arrived in Montello on March 18th, 2022 and met a man who alleged Venstra broke the lock to his cabin in Pilot Valley and stole several items. So, Weezer, is this one March 18th, a person in a cabin in Pilot Valley and Venstra stealing stuff. Is this the link here, Weezer? Let me know with that camouflage, that firearm, which was stolen. I mean, to be fair though, this does say March 18th and we were looking at the 25th 
of May. Yeah, it doesn't quite add up, does it? Maybe this is unrelated. People are also reading, the man said he confronted Venstra about the stolen property and he first denied the accusation, then confessed and returned the items. Right, so this has nothing to do with what Weezer was talking about because uh, the other case, the items were still missing. Weird about how Venstra confessed and returned the items back later. I mean, not exactly a smart criminal, really. The next day, deputies travelled to Pilot Valley to meet the man at his cabin. He said he discovered more items were missing and confronted Venstra at his motorhome. The man said Venstra started taking items out of the motorhome belonging to the man and putting them on the ground. So I wonder here the reference about Venstra's motorhome in Montello is the one Salty Pancakes and Kurt Wadsworth visited during the Dylan Brown's investigation, I wonder. Because there was a lot of items there. It reads, the man said Venstra then invited him inside the motorhome to check for more items. He said he saw Venstra move towards a pistol on a table and grabbed it before Venstra could, telling deputies he was scared when he saw Venstra move towards the gun, believing Venstra might shoot him in the back as he was exiting the motorhome. Wow. Deputy said they searched for Venstra on both days and did not locate him. Four days later, a Montello resident called deputies to report Venstra was spotted inside another home by a friend who was watching his house. The friend told deputies he saw Venstra with two firearms and items stuffed inside a bag and told Venstra to take the items out of the bag and leave deputies, said they saw no signs of forced entry. More than three months later, deputies responded to a call on June the 1st, 2022 in Montello on a report of a homeowner who discovered his back window was broken. He said five firearm tools equipment were missing. Additionally, all the gasoline had been siphoned from his vehicle. So really, June the 1st, 2022, this was around a time a couple of days later, past when Dylan Rounds was murdered in Lucent, Utah. And it was the day before June 1st. It would have been um, May the 31st when Kurt Wadsworth, unrelated, well, say unrelated to this charge, yes. But there's a crossover, as I said. You get these overlaps, right, from the Dylan Rounds case and these individual charges in which Chase Renstra was caught up in because he was responsible for. But just as a backstory, right, a day before June 1st, the 31st of May, is when Kurt Wadsworth made a call to the police, Candice Cooley, Justin Rounds, about Dylan Rounds, missing individual at the time, being held hostage in Montello. Nevada, okay, held hostage by Chase Venstra, Robert Aviles. You see how it crosses over? So June 1st, deputies responded to a call unrelated to that, to do with a homeowner discovering the window was broken and five firearms, tools, equipment missing. So Although it doesn't link to the Kurt Wadsworth call, you just see the names cross, crop, cropping up with one another. So on the 31st, police were already down there, but were looking into Dylan Rounds. And the day later, deputies down there directly responding to that call to do with Chase Venstra being responsible for an unrelated crime. Very interesting. The property owner said he works in Elko and had been away from his residence for two months when he discovered the break-in. Deputies found mud tracked inside from the window into the bedroom. The owner told deputies he had noticed Venstra scoping out his property from the dirt road and found Venstra late one evening near his house asking about buying a generator. The property owner said the generator was near the front door and only visible when someone was close to the house. He told deputies he heard reports of Venstra being arrested by Davis County Sheriff's Office in Utah 
a few weeks before. Davis County Sheriff's Office, Utah. Is that to do with Venstra being taken in or handing himself in in relation to the Dylan Rounds case early on to clear his name? Is there a correlation there? Because it is mentioned to do with Utah, right? And that's around the Dylan Rounds case. Deputies contacted the Davis County authorities and learned Venstra had been apprehended in June. Upon Venstra's arrest, they confiscated six firearms, outdoor recreational and hunting gear and tools. The Utah agency provided a list that matched up with the homeowner's descriptions. Criminal complaints were filed in Elko Justice Court on January the 12th and 16th by Elko County District Attorney's Office. Is that 2024? It's Venstra's second arrest in nine months. On June 16th, he was charged with owning or possessing a gun by a prohibited person and coercion, domestic violence, with threat or use of physical force, according to El Elko County Sheriff's Office records. Venstra's bail was set at $2.1 million. That's a lot, isn't it? Because of a range of different crimes and some repeated so it makes sense as to why it's high. But I guess the interesting part where it says about coercion, domestic violence, with a threat of use of physical force. Now, I'm assuming that means um, June 16th, 2024. I mean, the, the part about domestic violence or a bit of a domestic case, a, a restraining order being filed, I think it was, was in the past when Chase Fenstra had a girlfriend or wife and um, the woman needed to part ways and got a restraining order because of Venstra's behaviour at the time, very dark, negative, but Venstra, I think, broke the restraining order. Fast forward to a different situation, but on the 25th of May 2022, kind of tied in with the whole situation of Venstra coming across Dylan Rounds before that meet-up, that um, unplanned interaction. Earlier on in the day, Chase Venstra, at some point in Montello, Nevada, was at a ranch and was basically a peeping Tom watching a woman through the window. And the, the husband of the wife ended up seeing it and warned Venstra off. Venstra returned back and repeated it. Then the, the, the wife's husband ended up calling some other guys in and getting revenge on Venstra and beating him up. Okay. So you can see how when it comes to Venstra, repeated offences and other times confessing to what he's done, it's a little bit all over the place. He's committed a range of crimes and could be seen as definitely a threat to the general public, not learnt his lesson driven by firearms, in which firearms in the wrong hands can be a deadly bad combination and fatal for others out there. Uh, but that's at the same time, it just seems like like how we looked at Brenner, how Brenner was very sloppy with this and that and how he behaved. When it comes to Venstra, Venstra seems to be a bit all over the place too, slipping up here or there, confessing to this person or that person. I mean... Why? What's the point? So it's not gone well for Chase Venstra. Being, it's catched up with him. But as you saw, not at one point in this article did it directly reference the Dylan Rounds case. So that puts things into perspective, right? So I just wanted to share that news with you, the latest updates regarding Chase Venstra on unrelated charges. So you get a bit of a backstory behind him and what's gone on since. It might put it more into perspective with this, such the high bail. I think we'll leave it there for now. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Next video, I'll try and aim and focus back on the Dylan Rouse case specifically. And yeah, goodbye, good night for now.